you may be more sympathetic about this flat earth nonsense than I am. Uh, but if I'm going to have to argue about everything from who she is to what the charge is, it'd be easier to just put on the prelim. From the affidavit of probable cause, her conduct was outrageous with a capital O. Can we? Yeah. All right. All right. Give me your ID, please. Give me your ID or I'm going to place you under arrest for failure to ID. Do not resist. David, get on record. Record away. Get sir. my stuff. Get my. Get it. Everything. You're hurting my wrist. Go. Yes, isn't gonna work here. Come at me. Let go. Officer Hanson has kidnapped me. He put handcuffs on me. I'm not gonna help you. Can you help me? Yeah, ma'am, I'm stopping you. You're the driver. Here. You're driving the car. I'm stopping you. You're free to go. No, ma'am, you are Don't stopped as part of a traffic me. stop. Okay? Don't touch me. A legal traffic stop. Do not touch me. I don't care. Give and me your ID. Do not talk to me. Give me your ID. No. You okay. pulled in here after I was I stopped. saw the infraction on the road. You can leave. I saw the infraction on the road. I saw you cracking me. Yep. All right. All right. Give me your ID, please. What, what's going on? Why are I'm you stopping her. You're, you're not involved in me. this. You can leave. You're not stopping me. Uh, yes, sir. I am, ma'am. No, All right. Give me your ID, or I'm going to place you under arrest for failure to ID. There was no crime. Give me your ID, or I'm going to place you under arrest for failure to ID. A crime Don't touch me. Do not <laughs> do this. You got it on record? Done. You're messing up. Yeah, I'm recording all this. Record away, Get sir. Get my stuff. Yeah. Get my I'm stuff. I'm gonna grab her stuff. Get it. Everything. You You really need to do Get out of my face now. Dude. Edward hey, Sam Boy at four two nine two on eight. It's over. Your sovereign citizen BS isn't going to work here. Get in the car. Let go of me. Let go! You're harassing this woman. That's, that's wrong. What you do to her. Okay. There's no crime. Stay committed. out of my safe spot. There was no crime committed. You need to realize there was no crime committed at all. There's no crime committed. Call 911! Call 911! She's under arrest. You Come in, call 911! She's under arrest. This is, uh... Call 911! You're about to lose your job over this. Hey, 911! Officer Hanson has kidnapped me! He put handcuffs on me! Boy, King He's down. kidnapping me! I have one under. He threw me in his truck! He manhandled me! He's breaking my wrist! I'm, I feel like I'm bleeding! I'm still on my face! Down in the back of the seat of his cruiser! He threw me in here. Had it on recording too. He threw okay, me in this great. trap. Have a nice day. You can leave. I demand to be released. I want the sheriff here right now. Is your ID in the car? Hanson has kidnapped me. Is your ID in the car? Hanson has kidnapped me. There's no ID. Could you stand away from me, please? Will you listen to what is going on? Mr. Matt Hansen, and stop acting like we're doing something okay. wrong. What's going on is I saw the fraction on the road. Just because you pulled into the driveway, it's not a safe spot.
I get to conduct a traffic stop. It doesn't matter. Up here that doesn't matter. Decided to pull into our driveway and she failed to idea on a traffic stop. Right, she's going to jail tonight. What? Yeah. What? Okay, so say that again. She, she failed to ID herself on a traffic stop. That this is, was not a traffic stop. Yes, we were what? already out of our vehicles. It's on your recording and everything. Yep, okay. Is there ID in here? 911! Call 911! Is her ID in that purse? You need to let her go. You're not allowed to get in that car. Please close the car door. Are you the owner of this car? Are you the owner of the car? Are you the owner of the car? Yeah. You are you the owner. Now you're illegally trespassing in another vehicle. I'm being kidnapped! I'm not in the vehicle. This it's isn't your property. You need to get out of here. You can record me. Keep your mouth shut and stay over there. I don't have to keep my mouth shut because I'm on my own property and I, there's no property. All right, let's go on the record. We're about to deal with the last scheduled matter of the day. And I'm going to start over again. The title of the case is People versus Rosalind Ray Keenan. The allegation is that on or about May 16th in the village of White Pigeon, she did resist and obstruct a police officer and drive with a suspended driver's license. Resisting and obstructing is a felony. It's punishable by up to two years imprisonment. And driving suspended is a traffic matter, punishable by up to 93 days in jail and a fine of up to $500. Carries two points on your driving record and requires that your license be suspended. Someone who is identified as Rosalind Keenan is present and she wanted to explain more about that. We'll give her a chance to do that. But prosecuting attorney David Marvin is here and uh, he's representing the state. So let me ask you again, are you Rosalind Ray Keenan? I'm here on as a uh, city jurist and appropriate persona, Rosalind hyphen Ray colon, family of Keenan, comma, beneficiary. Is this on record? Yes, everything has to be on the record, so it's all being recorded. Okay, I'm here on the special appearance, and I'm a free woman on the land. I'm here under fraud, menace, and duress. I'm the private woman, Rosalind hyphen Ray Colon. All right. Keenan, the all capital mentioned name is the only appellation given to me. Anytime I autograph is to be done in, in a certain manner that I have here, or it's forgery. Could you give this to the judge, please? That's my name. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll accept this. Thank you. All right, so I think we have the right person here. When she signed her bond, she signed it as Rosalind Ray Keenan beneficiary with quick bail bonds. All right, now we've got another issue. This is a felony charge. The first one is. The second one is under the motor vehicle code. And... It requires that we have a preliminary examination or it requires that you're entitled to a preliminary examination. We had a pre-exam conference last week and you expressed at that time that you did not wish to have an attorney. You're here with you this morning without an attorney and we'll address that in a moment. You've been talking with Mr. Marvin. You have an absolute right to represent yourself. I normally don't recommend it. Mr. Marvin will sit down and talk with anybody, whether they're an attorney or whether they're a layperson. So you and he have been meeting to discuss this. Mr. Marvin, is there a plea offer here? There is. Um, and I'll tell you about that. But I wanted to mention that this is, I believe, the third time we've sat down. And uh, so this is dragged out a bit, but only because she's not represented. And in these three separate meetings um, and adjournments, the court has uh, allowed those. And I appreciate it. I have spent a lot of time with her and her son who's here he's always been here and they're very honest and they're good intended thank you um and i think that we've come to a resolution that i believe is fair i'm going to state state it for the record and only time will tell if she's going to accept it and hopefully two seconds but 
what I would do is offer an attempt resisting and obstructing and dismiss count two. And in, I would ask that the court set this for sentencing at a later date, and I'd ask for six months. And if by that time there's no other incidents with law enforcement or any other reason to continue, I would dismiss this or at any time before that if I felt that it was necessary. And again, after um, working with her, I, I don't think this is the kind of thing that should be. Um, I would hate to see this upstairs as her first felony. I think that she's. Uh, interested in a way of life that she's honestly trying to understand, but I think that um, partly to assist her, um, I've kind of hatched this plan and I've offered that. I have the feeling she's going to take it today, but if not, I've got my officer and we're ready for a prelim. He's offering to reduce the driving suspended charge. And he is offering to dismiss the felony charge and reduce it to a charge called attempted resisting obstructing a police officer. That's a misdemeanor. It's punishable by up to a year in jail and a fine of up to a thousand dollars. Do you understand that charge? No, I don't understand the nature and the cause of the charge. All right, Mr. Marvin, let's just do a prelim. I'm not going to tap dance with her. You may be more sympathetic about this flat earth nonsense than I am. Uh, but if I'm going to have to argue about everything from who she is to what the charge is, it'd be easier to just put on the prelim. From the affidavit of probable cause, her conduct was outrageous with a capital O. And uh, so I'll give you one more opportunity, uh, Ms. Keenan. Uh, Mr. Marvin is agreeing to dismiss the driving suspended charge. The record shows your license is suspended from Indiana and you don't have a valid Michigan license. That's a benefit. It won't affect your driving privileges. Uh, Excuse me? What did you say about the? It's a benefit. And no, this... before that, about the license. Um, he's dismissing it. And it won't affect your driving privileges here or Michigan or Indiana if he dismisses that. Um, so he's offering to dismiss it. And that's a benefit. He is offering to reduce the felony charge to a misdemeanor. And that's attempted resisting and obstructing a police officer. Um, if you wish to do that, we can pursue it now. If you don't, we can take testimony. The officer's been waiting here for three hours. Um, what would you like to do? Are you asking me to take a plea? I'm asking you if you're willing to accept the prosecutor's plea offer. Well, I don't understand that. Mr. Because Marvin, let's playing, just put on a plea. I'm not playing games. I'm serious. You are playing games. And first of all, I'm you don't. trying to advance to All right, what I'm stop. Here. You don't interrupt the judge, whether you're a flat earther or not. I'm not flat earther. All right. Well, this crazy stuff you're saying, I've got very little patience for it. You don't have an attorney, which concerns me uh, because these charges could result in your incarceration. I will appoint an attorney for you. All you got to do is tell me. Um but you also have the absolute right to represent yourself. So uh, do you wish to represent yourself or would you like me to get an attorney to assist you with this? It's my right to appear for myself. It is. I don't think it would be a, a violation of your oath of office. To do what? To... Um, If you did your duty under the Constitution, because I'm seeking legal intent, not advice. Well, and do you I, want me to appoint an attorney for you? Would you like to represent yourself? So may I ask what jurisdiction is this civil or criminal? This is a criminal case, which points out the fact that you could use a lawyer if you can't tell the difference between a civil and a criminal case. Criminal case means you could go to jail, in this case, for up to two years. 
in a civil case, there's no possibility of jail. It's usually over money damages or other types of non-jail relief, like other types of non-jail relief. So yes, this is a criminal case. Well, thank you. So um, you said the record is on. Yes. Could the record of the court show that this is a criminal action? And my next question is, I know that the Constitution grants the court two types of criminal jurisdictions. One is criminal jurisdiction under common law, and the other is criminal jurisdiction under admiralty or military tribunal venue under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 of the Constitution. With Clause 17 of Article 1, Section 8, also known as the Enclave Clause, Congress established what would become Washington, D.C. as the seat of the national government. It was important not to house the national government within any particular state, as that might give undue power to that state's legislature. The two are totally unrelated. Under which of these two jurisdictions is the court intending to try me? This is statutory jurisdiction of the law of the state of Michigan. It's not any of those things, including the wacky admiralty uh, clause people try to invoke. This is criminal jurisdiction uh, authorized by the state legislature uh, here in the state of Michigan. Thank you. Well, please let the record of the court show that the court intends to conduct a criminal action against me under a statutory jurisdiction. But that makes me wonder, I have never heard of criminal action under statutory jurisdiction and there is no such jurisdiction established in the Constitution. And I will be able to proceed if you can show me where I can find the published rules of civil procedures under a statutory jurisdiction and where this nature, cause, and jurisdiction exists. It is crucial that I have the published rules of procedure so that I can conduct a fair defense and fair trial. Otherwise, this needs to be dismissed. And I would like it in writing, please. Uh, thank you. It's not thank civil you. procedure, it's criminal procedure. And the defendant doesn't come up and show, court, tell me why I get to do this. You've been charged under the criminal statutes of the state of Michigan, and I've just advised you of that on the record. I'm just trying to establish at this point whether you want to represent yourself or not. Uh, as I mentioned, the conduct in here and the affidavit or the bond information report is outrageous with a capital O. And you could very well go to jail for a substantial period of time. Mr. Marvin was trying to extend to you an opportunity to avoid that option, uh, but you're wasting all of our time with this stuff that doesn't have any legal merit. I'm offering to give you an attorney who can actually argue any legal merit or advise you or assist you in this regard. But we've had some white pigeon police officers here on overtime for several hours. They're still waiting for you to decide what you wish to do. I haven't even gone over the first. Well, first of all, we had to establish who you were. That took much more time than it deserved. Secondly, I'm trying to determine whether you wish to have an attorney or not. Uh, again, you do have the right to represent yourself. You wish to, but you've exhibited to me that you don't understand the law and you're at risk of being incarcerated for this conduct. So to further comment on Mr. Marvin's offer, if you pled to the charge of attempted resisting and obstructing a police officer, he offered to defer the sentence for six months, and if there were no further problems, to dismiss it, which is very generous based on the police report bond information that I came with the file. So... What would you like to do here today? Do you wish to represent yourself? Thank you. I do, I know I can peer for myself. 
I'm competent and I am confident. Okay. All right. So the next question is, are please. you willing to accept Mr. Marvin's plea offer to plead to the misdemeanor charge? I wasn't completed with what I wanted to say to you, please. Okay. May I? Thank you. So I wanted to say that I don't believe it's a violation of your oath of office if you did your duty under the Constitution because I'm seeking legal intent. Okay, so I have the right to appear for myself in order to intelligently defend myself. I have to know the jurisdiction this court is operating under because the rules of civil procedure under common law jurisdiction are very different from the rules of civil procedure right, or admiralty stop. or military stop. tribunal venue. Stop, stop, stop. We went through this before. I this know. is not civil it's procedure. The Sixth Amendment grants me the right to know the jurisdiction being applied. And I told you what it was. And it gives you the duty. All right, stop. If you interrupt me one more time, I'm going to find you in contempt and you're going to go to jail. Objection, please. All I right, please. Please. We're going sir, to talk about I, this tomorrow contempt. at three o'clock. I find that you're in contempt. You're I going to jail to right now. Contempt, and we sir. will. Well, you have been. I'm simply this matter trying is adjourned to exercise until tomorrow my at Sixth three Amendment o'clock. rights, please. So you can think about and it one more night in jail. This right now, please. No, you're I, going to jail for 24 hours. Contempt, I know you don't wish to go to jail, but you certainly I have earned it. I will continue with you, so if you please let me finish. We'll talk about it tomorrow at three o'clock, and you will be more respectful to the court. I you can will provide speak. the you citations. You will not interrupt the court. Your citations are meaningless. I'm sorry. So I you can you. go you with the officer. I don't want to argue about it. Take I'm her out of here. We will address this tomorrow at three o'clock. Stand up with the hand. No. I can't get her, her aspects because there. They'll get them for you. You can give all the paperwork to him. Thank you. Mr. Marvin, I don't know what you've got tomorrow at three o'clock, and I don't know what I have, but we'll take another shot at this tomorrow. Justice takes time. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, and I don't think this was a fair trial. We haven't had a trial yet. A fair preliminary. We didn't even get there yet. Yep, absolutely. Here we go. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go over here, Ms. Kim. Yeah, I'll, I'll get all the property for you. I'll go right over here. Here, fill my pockets. Listen to the office. Yep, I, I will get all the property from you, ma'am. And we'll whatever is left over, I'll give you the property. Well, I'm not gonna give you the property. I'm 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 gonna give you the there we go. Go ahead and watch your foot. There we go. Sir, uh, that's it. That is court over. Yeah, we're done. Can I say something? Yes. Was, uh, I, don't, I don't think that she was trying to be in contempt of court. She was trying to exercise a right. That I think it was a misunderstanding of how to for her to be able to pronounce that. But, uh, well, I told her to stop and she didn't stop and she doesn't know what she's doing. She needs a lawyer I, I, she and knows. she's going to contempt herself into 90 days if she doesn't be careful. So we'll address this tomorrow at three o'clock and to whatever extent you're advising her on this stuff, you're not doing her any favors. Mr. Marvin gave her the sweetest deal where she could not have a charge on her record. And all she wants to do is argue about admiralty. Please have that record still, or that chart, that option still, if I talk to Mr. Marvin. I, yeah, I guess so. Well, you can't represent her as a lawyer. I know. But he could, yeah, he, Mr. Marvin wants this to be over with. I do too. All all right. Right. Thank you. The car's being impounded. You're violating every right. Let me go. Let me go. It doesn't matter where you're allowed to park. This is being impounded. For what?
can't even get what's going on, do you, man? Why are you so mad at us? I'm not mad at you. Yeah, yeah you are mad, mad at us. He's crazy you don't and he hates us. There's something that you're doing. There's a reason. He had me in good tight. Him and the whole force. The dispatchers. They're not helping me. They left me lay here in agony. In turmoil and distress. Dispatcher 2412. It's going to go easy on the plate. Good. No! Don't talk to this guy! Do what? not talk to the pig! About the car. No, nah, man. Please don't have out the car, man. Okay, uh, let, let, let me explain me. something to you. Right now. Uh, no, no, let, let me explain like, something to you. I have okay. here. I, that, I that's not my problem, I okay? I've problem, talked with I'm you guys here. several times before, and every single time I've dealt with you, it has always been confrontation, arguing, combativeness. Today was a we simple traffic stop that you guys wouldn't have gotten a ticket for, but instead she said she wants to play the sovereign citizen game and doesn't want to identify herself, which is illegal citizen. in this state of Michigan. It's, it's I've that. given the order multiple times. She failed how to comply about, with that. So at listen. this point, she's going to be arrested for resisting and obstructing in the state of Michigan. And at this point, maybe destruction of police property. depends on how much she kicks back there. Yeah, the car is being impounded as part of my arrest. If you this guys is wanted my to play... my girlfriend's car. You guys can't impound it. I can get her on the phone if you need to. Too late. How about that? You and guys already, you guys already made been, your decision. I haven't made the, any decision. You made the decision right. for me. She, she made the decision. Yeah, but that's that's going against me, too. Yeah. I haven't done I've been polite. Every one of you. I can't help that, though. Well, you associate with her. Okay. I, so and you're also, you're, you're also playing the same game. You're saying you're a sovereign citizen. You're you're free I man of the never land. Said, I am sort, sort. I mean, I don't like sovereign, whatever. Know. However you want to say it, you're playing you these games, that, these you, word games. Okay. It's not. It's not that it's hard to say. Hey, here's that, my idea on a traffic stop. Thanks Lucy. for the ticket, officer. Or have a good day, officer. But Thanks you, for the break. Free you me didn't now. give me that opportunity, did you guys? I didn't have that. You didn't have that because you're free to go. You're a passenger. I'm not stopping you. I'm stopping her. But this is. And I'm uh, stopping the car that she's driving. You guys are just digging yourself yeah, deeper. Yeah, me. And I haven't done nothing to you. You all got well, family. You just show me some courtesy. Your family's going to hear about it. It's going to be blast him all nope. over the place. i got to play the game fairly. You, you guys made what? that decision. I didn't make it. An eye for an eye. I'll tell you that right now. That's right, buddy. If you destroy any part of this car, I will charge you with it. You don't threaten me anymore. You threaten me enough. You're extorting me. You f***ing, he kidnapped me. Your kids are going to find out about this. All of America's going to know. You can't do this to people and get away with it, and you're not getting away with it. Everybody that's with you, the dispatchers that aren't helping me get loose right now from you holding me hostage, I demand to be released immediately. Get me out of here. Get me out. Yeah, your whole family's going to find out. Don't think they're not. This is going to be plastered everywhere, buddy. While you're distorting and carrying on like you are and destroying people's lives. Yeah, you ain't getting away with it. Let me out of here. Is the sheriff coming? Nope. All right. We're about to begin our continued preliminary examination. Let me, and that will complete our day, hopefully. Good afternoon. Please have a seat. There you are. Yep. We're a little early. It's 2.57. I guess there's no harm in that. This is file 23915FY, People versus Rosalind Ray Keenan. Ms. Keenan is charged with resisting obstructing a police officer. <clears throat> which is a felony punishable by up to two years imprisonment at a fine of up to $2,000 and with driving suspended. That's a misdemeanor punishable by up to 93 days in jail <clears throat> and a fine of up to $500. It carries six points, excuse me, two points <clears throat> on your driving record and it requires that the license be suspended. I apologize, I'm losing my voice at the end of the day here. That sometimes happens. I talk too much. Anyway, uh, yesterday we were here. Ms. Keenan had previously indicated she did not wish to have an attorney. And there was no attorney on her behalf at that time. 
Prosecutor David Marvin was here yesterday, and there was one or more police officers that were here yesterday prepared to testify. We didn't get very far. We started to go through the particulars, but Mr. Marvin made a plea offer. I want to repeat that, Ms. Keenan. Um, he offered to dismiss the felony charge of resisting and obstructing. He offered to dismiss the charge of driving suspended, which would not go on your driving record, for a misdemeanor plea to attempting to resist or obstruct a police officer. That's a misdemeanor. It's punishable by up to a year in jail and a fine of up to $1,000. He offered to then defer the sentence for six months. And if there were no other issues or concerns, he would consider dismissing the case. He was not able to be here this afternoon. He stopped in this morning and confirmed to me that his plea offer was still open to dismiss the felony charge and the driving suspended charge for the plea to attempting to resist or obstruct a police officer. Uh, we were talking with Ms. Keenan yesterday. I found that she was in contempt and ordered that she go to jail, and she did, and we're here today. We were trying to establish um, whether she wanted any legal assistance in this matter. So, Ms. Keenan, you're the same person that you were yesterday with the same reservations and concerns. Is that correct? Thank you. Um, I have some things on um, my proof that the license shouldn't have been suspended and they did reinstate them in Indiana. All right. Well, he's willing to dismiss that charge. I think that's why, because I showed it to him. All right. Well, maybe so. He said you and he had several discussions. Um, so let's see if we can get to square one here. Do you want an attorney to assist you in this matter? Um, I can appoint one and we can set it for further hearing. I don't want to force one on you, but I do think you could benefit from having counsel. Uh, it was clear you didn't understand the difference between a criminal case and a civil case, and you contempted yourself into a day in jail. I won't be offended if you tell me that you want to have an attorney, in which case I would set this matter for further proceeding out two weeks, which would be July 5th. How would you like to proceed, Ms. Keenan? Thank you. So if I choose to get an attorney, I have two weeks, and then nothing else will be brought up today. Correct. Now, you could enter the plea to the misdemeanor offer that Mr. Marvin made today, but I do think you could benefit from having an attorney to assist you with this, okay. in which case I would continue it to the 5th of July. That's two weeks from today in the afternoon. Usually it'd be on a Tuesday, but that's a holiday. It would be one o'clock on July 5th. Am I going to be still having to stay at the county jail and wait? Till well, then? let's talk about that. No, you posted a $10,000 cash or surety bond. However, you've not agreed to be fingerprinted. So as soon as you agree to be fingerprinted, you can be released from jail. Otherwise, you're going to sit there for two weeks. Okay. All right. Would you like me to appoint an attorney for you? Yes, if I appoint an if you appoint an attorney, mm -hmm. um, they're ahead. defense attorneys. Yes. Oh, okay. Here's your son. All right, I'm going to appoint an attorney, which I think you could benefit from. <clears throat> I guess you can always say it later. I don't want one, but I'd at least like to have an opportunity to consult with one. Thank you. Um, I have a question too. All right. If I have an attorney, I would like to be able to not be able to see him any sooner than Friday because I want to be able to go. That's fine. Uh, to a couple appointments for my dental and things that I want to. I'll do. give you their name or number. It could be a he or a she. Continue to July fifth at one o'clock for prelim.
Bond is reinstated. You mean that the bond was canceled? No, it wasn't canceled. Oh. Under condition, a defendant be fingerprinted. The original complaint from the day of the arrest said that you did not comply with fingerprinting at that time. They attempted to do the fingerprinting again yesterday and they weren't able to do it. And I was advised by correction staff that as of today, you've still declined to be fingerprinted. So as soon as you agree to be fingerprinted, you can get out. If you don't, you can sit there for two weeks and we'll discuss it next Friday, or excuse me, on July 5th. In the meantime, I believe Mr. Marvin's misdemeanor office offer is going to remain open, but you're not to be released until you complied with the booking process, including photo and fingerprints. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Today, yes, I, today I, uh, I think it was today or maybe because I slept a lot. So I don't even, anyway, they booked me and took my picture. All right. Well, the was picture's that done. Enough? That's good enough, but you That's have to agree enough. to the fingerprints. Oh, I still have to do yes. the fingerprints? And you can decide whether you want to do it. If you don't, that's well, up to I'm you. I'm going to do it. All right. Because I appreciate your offer. Thank you. All right. They'll take you back to the jail. If you finger finish the fingerprint process, you can pick her up at the jail. Uh, we'll give you the paperwork before she goes about who her court-appointed attorney is. After Friday, I want you to call them and make an appointment to discuss this matter with them. All right. You're good to go. Three weeks later. Good afternoon once again. Are you Roslyn Ray Keenan? Uh, this is file 23915FY. Ms. Keenan is charged with resisting instructing a police officer and driving suspended. Uh, that allegedly occurred in the village of White Pigeon on May 16th. The defendant was arraigned on this. We had some discussion, and I encouraged her to get an attorney to assist her with that, and she was not really in favor of that. But I said, well, let's appoint an attorney. You can discuss it with him and then determine how we want to proceed at that time. Ms. Keenan, resisting obstructing a police officer is a felony. It's punishable by up to two years in prison and a fine of up to $2,000. The driving charge carries... Two points, up to 93 days in jail and a fine of up to $500, and it requires that your license be further suspended. When we were here earlier, Mr. Marvin had made a, what I consider to be a very generous plea offer, but we weren't able to get to that point. And so the matter was set for a preliminary examination today. A preliminary examination is a hearing where it must be established in order to go forward, that there's probable cause to believe a crime was committed and probable cause that you did it. So I'll defer to you, Mr. Bush. Where are we here today? Well, there's a, a number of issues for the court to hear. Um, Ms. Keenan is asking for a 30-day adjournment so she can review the discovery. I, I believe she's been provided with most of the discovery, but th that is her request. There is Mr. Mr. Marvin, are there video? Or uh, dash everything camera? that I have, she has. Including video? Yes. Okay. I don't know. She may have. I have it. Okay. Put it that way. There's a very short police report and some audiovisual evidence. All right. Ms. Keenan, is that true? You're going to ask to adjourn this matter 30 days? I was asking, uh, requesting that from him. Okay. Oh, well, I don't. I put it in writing in an email and asked a few things, but. Well, and I told her that I would make that request. I mean, we just met and uh, we really haven't had a chance to go through any of this. Mr. Marvin, what's your thought? First of all, I just want to make it clear that the offer is still available to resolve this. Um, I do have a problem, though, with pulling Officer Hansen off the job as many times as we have. This has been, I'd say he's spent at least four hours sitting here waiting for these and this one, one adjournment after the next. I don't know what a 30 day adjournment would do. I don't know for what reason. There's nothing that I could see that hasn't been explained. I don't know if it's gonna do anybody any good. I think we're gonna be back in the same boat. Well, we may. Yeah, I felt your plea offer was very generous. It would result essentially in no conviction. That's right. 
And it would take the driving charge away. Yes. And also I recently found out that that's been restored anyway. So part of my offer was um, get that restored and then I will, uh, there'll be a, a plea to a um, attempt RNO and then that will be dismissed if, if uh, there's smooth sailing for, I would ask for uh, about six months, but at any time before then I planned on dismissing this. Miss Keenan and I had a pretty animated discussion the first day. And then the second day, it was much more subdued, and I encourage her to get an attorney to help her. She has a profound misunderstanding of how Michigan law works, both in the criminal code and the traffic code. Um, I refer to these people as borough groves. Um, they're commonly referred to as sovereign citizens, but I don't find any sovereign in it. She certainly is a citizen. So Miss Keenan, I don't know enough about this. I wasn't there. You were there and you experienced what you experienced. Apparently there's video of it. Mr. Marvin has offered for a plea and a deferral and a dismissal. I am pleased to hear you have your driver's license back. So I won't be dealing with that issue in the future, but you were allegedly suspended at the time of this. If you get convicted of the driving suspended charge, it's going to undo what you just did. It's going to take your license away. Uh, and Mr. Marvin's not really looking for that, but that could be the result of this. So what more do you want, Ms. Keenan? Is this to be... Um brought on record what my asking of this man here in an email was. Yes, what are you asking for? I asked for a 30 day um, continuance so that I could put things together to defend my rights, to defend myself, um, not to excuse anything else, but to... Do you want Mr. Bush to represent you in this matter? I have been wanting okay. to, but uh, I want to be able to get to know him a little bit better because we did have a back-to-back -back magnet effect on some issues well, today. Well, and I envisioned that whoever got appointed to this would clash with you because you have and I can't tell whether the, these are sincerely held beliefs or just part of a contrary lifestyle whoever is providing you with this information as I said isn't doing you any favors and I'm not even sure the people that origin in fact, I doubt that the people that originally this stuff even believe it. It's so nonsensical. Admiralty law and code of civil procedure and things that just didn't apply to this. But I do apologize. Officer Hansen's been here multiple times. Um, but if 30 days could help resolve this rather than bind this over to circuit court on a felony charge, maybe it's worth it. Let's see, Mr. Bush, when your next duty week is. Now, you can hire a lawyer if you wish, but I don't think you're going to be able to do that. You're not going to be able to pay anybody money to try to provide the defense that you want. Um, they just will decline to accept you as a client because they don't need that aggravation. In fact, I would be amazed if you could find somebody that you could hire that's a licensed attorney in the state of Michigan that would pursue the kind of defenses that you want. Plus, you don't have a lot of money, and so you're eligible for court appointed counsel anyway. But um, I would tell you to go hire your own lawyer. We aren't able to find one. And if I appoint someone other than Mr. Bush, you're going to have the same issues you have with him that you're having with Mr. Bush. I'm going to continue this for 
a prelim. How about if we set a pre-exam conference so we don't have to drag Officer Hanson in here? That's reasonable. If, if you just set it on my duty, we could pre-exam. Well, the problem is your duty week isn't way until the end of September. I, I, I don't know that, Judge. Uh, you don't have another duty week till December 25th. Um, that's why I'm going about 30 days. Uh, I'll set a pre-exam conference for August 15th at 8.30. That way you don't need a subpoena, don't need to drag Deputy Hanson in here. If the matter is resolved, we can deal with that. If it isn't, we can schedule a preliminary examination at that time. So we'll leave it at that. Um, do you have any questions you want to ask yeah. at this time? You're continuing it? Then? Yes, I am. I'm grand. Thank you. All right, I'll just leave it at that. All right, you're free to go. Several days later. All right. The only thing I have left in here is Rosalind Ray Keenan. Mr. John Bush was here. Um, the other traveler, Borough Gove case, this case, they amended it from a felony to a misdemeanor. What I don't know is whether Miss Keenan was here. Uh, Attorney John Bush was here. And uh, Joshua Robert advised they were going to recharge it as a misdemeanor. So I will set an attorney pretrial for September 1st when they're already set. See where we go with this.